So, hi everyone. I think we're back. Um, welcome back to all our listeners. It's a great pleasure to be here today with us. Uh, thank you so much to the Riga Yomala Academy for putting all of this together. It's great. Um, thanks to my orchestra also to be in touch, uh, to be in collaboration with the, with the festival. Um, we have uh, Ernest now, who is going to play some Bach as well. Um, the fourth suite, right? You wanted yeah. to play the Prelude and the Sarabande. It's all very challenging for us now to play with earphones and then all those technical things are quite unusual. <laughs> so we try to do the best out of it. Um, so Ernest is going to play without uh, the headphones first. I think it's, it's much more comfortable. <laughs> Especially for that suite, because so much is happening. <laughs> so, um, great to have you here, very nice to meet you. Hopefully we will meet uh, once as it was actually planned for real in, uh, during a beautiful summer in Riga. <laughs> but I think it's already a great thing to, to be able to meet like this now. Uh, yeah. Better than nothing, for sure. Great, so I can't wait to, to hear you. All right, I'll try my best then. <laughs> sure.
Bravo. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think you could put them on, no? So that it's... <laughs> Great, bravo. How is your hand doing? <laughs> is it okay? Surviving? <laughs> I think it's important for our listeners to know that this prelude from the fourth suite especially is extremely tiring yeah. because it's, um, it's a tonality where we have to stretch our hand the whole time and uh, it's, it's very exhausting. So bravo, really. Uh, great, great job. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about a few things now. So um, I think the big challenge um, in this period is that, of course, um, especially in this period, I am always hearing an org, an orgel, you know, when I, when I hear that. So, of course, we don't have the acoustic of a church or of a big cathedral right now. Mm -hmm. So um, this is also very challenging for us because we have to try to to uh, recreate, you know, this, this acoustic. Um, so I think it's the goal for us is always to try to um, make this line going so that, so that there are no holes or no, yeah. you know, uh, um, corners that we can hear. It should all be, you know, as much as possible, a big sound, um, you know, impression. So I think when you start, try to, to connect you know the tones so that there is always so that the sound is never being killed so to say at the end of the note that's the big challenge and it's very challenging because we have to go all the way from the lower string to the upper one so there is something about about anticipating you know when you play the first note maybe you could try to already go up you know here so that so that you try to connect even better, you know? Do you want to try? Yeah, I'll try that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great. And then, um, that's, that's great. And then try to keep the intensity also. That's, that's the challenge. I think um, the whole prelude is, is a very, you know, there are like harmonic blocks, you know, moving. And um, I think it's important to stay in the same um, harmonic ID, you know, for the whole bar. Yeah, so that's uh, what, I, what I felt, you know, when you played it is that too often uh, you release the tension yeah. and then I don't enjoy the harmony during the whole bar, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, it can start to start sounding, you know, a bit the same pattern all the yeah. time, you know. So that's we need to, to, you know, to be able to keep the attention at all times. So try to try to for now to try to keep this big sound. Eh? It's it's very challenging. Uh, we're going to try to do our best. Just, just try again from the beginning. Exactly. Great. I think it's also a question of, of timing. Now it was better already. I would try to always move on. You know, don't um, don't wait or or be slowed down by all those uh, um, yeah. string changes. You know, so that um, so that the flow is always as natural as possible due to all those circumstances. You know, so try to avoid sticking somewhere. You know, and um, try to really here. This one has to be quite low. It's always a little bit too too high. Yeah. So it's always a question of stretching quickly and then release, yeah? Just try one more time. Okay, good, yeah. So, um, it's always the same harmony. First bar, 
and then the same but just with the sevens added. And so four bars, the same harmony. So try to have this one block. But then when you come here, maybe you could start to relax a bit, you know. And actually that might be very much needed also in terms of, of technical approach. So take your time to really get this fourth finger. Actually, I was, you know, trying all sorts of different finger and small here also, but it, it's actually quite nice to, to, you know, calm down a bit. And then really try to really relax so that you can start then from there. Yeah, so I really want to hear more differences, you know, in terms of yeah, dynamic. Yeah. Um, is it really clear in your, in your mind where you want to go, how you feel the harmonies? Um, I mean, roughly. Roughly, <laughs> roughly yeah. yeah. I think it's, um, of course, it can be spontaneous. And that's, that's the wonder about Bach, you know, is that the more you play it, the more you see possibilities, of course. But um, at the same time, since it's a very challenging one in terms of, of technique, maybe for now it would be good for you to have a clear plan where you want to go, which harmony you want to show in a strong way, where you want to release. And I need to be able to hear that more clearly, you know, in terms of sound. Yeah. yeah. yeah? So can you try from here? And we will just try for now to release so that I can really hear how you manage to do it in terms of yeah. sound. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. So, um, in terms of articulation, I, I wouldn't stir too much because if you play so legato here, then when you play, it's almost impossible, you know, to have. So I think in terms of articulation, I can imagine that if you play it on an orgel, of course, it's going to be the same articulation yeah. probably, you know, because you don't have those technical issues. So I think it's nice to have maybe something something in between so that of course it's always alive but so that we don't get irritated by different uh, articulations in between the, the pattern you know so uh, why don't we try maybe a little bit more simple you know mm -hmm. Um, something extremely important, um, I think, is the, the place where you are playing, you know. I can see that most of the time you are playing around here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, of course, in, in Bach or Haydn, and so we, we, we were talking about this before, um, we, we have a preference to play around here, you know, so that it's yeah. light and, and so. But I think for some places it's very important to change the, the contact points so that your sound, your, your musical message can be uh, really uh, heard in terms of sound as well, no? So when you play here, for instance, I just play the first, the first note of, of every bar, no? What I wish is to hear, and then, so as you can see, my bow is going down every time so that the sound is really opening now. More and even more. more. Even here, if you want to stay strong, especially here. 
Yeah, you are reaching this point finally. So try to really go deep in the string so that we can really hear that in terms of sound. And then release again. And then... Yeah? So try to show us those, those phrasings and, yeah. and those, you know. Um, can you try just for me this? And then... And now... Exactly. So it's good that we're experimenting a bit, you know. You need to know exactly how far your cello can go, no? So maybe you started a bit too loud and then you had to force, you know. So maybe you could start even less, you know, very soft and then... So that you never have to force and that the sound is always yeah. pure and, and warm. Yeah, try one more time. Yes, bravo. Yeah, do you hear the difference, right? So now we have three clear steps, you know? Mm -hmm. So try to add now the rest and, and let us hear those bass lines. Great, great. And now try to do the same without stopping, you know, or. or because I think it's, you know, it stops the flow, yeah? So try to do exactly the same. So that, you know, this is really untouched, you know, this, this pulse has to just flow and, and don't, <laughs> you know, it's like driving the car like this. Try to have a smooth ride. <laughs> so that you, we can really just enjoy the harmonies and, and we don't have the, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. this kind of feeling, right? Try one more time. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, it's better. I think you can even go, start even softer, you know? Yeah. Um, I think you're allowed to do it, you know, it, it's beautiful sometimes if you go down. Uh, maybe it's also an acoustical... It's a bit of uh, the headphones because I hear the headphones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very unusual, but, but just try to exaggerate even more, yeah. just as an experiment. Good, great, yeah, I'm just going to be very picky still. Um, I think in terms of line, you know, we have, I think it's a bigger line, you know, you have... Uh, and then it's still going on. And then, finally, you reach the next tonality, no? So, try to you know, keep the intensity so that it's not always one bar, one bar, one bar. It's extremely important mm -hmm. because otherwise um, listeners won't probably be able to analyze why it sounds a bit boring, so to say. I mean, yeah. it didn't sound boring, of course, but, you know, you really need to, to make sure that, that those phrases, those lines are being sustained sometimes about, uh, for more than one bar, you know, so that we feel a big arch and then you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the intensity is kept alive, yeah. you know. So just try one more time and think bigger, bigger phrase. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Much better, yeah? So now I could really hear um, a long phrase, you know, with, yeah. a, with a beautiful shape. Um, something that's very challenging always is um, the sound quality, because uh, the way you produce the sound on the C string, especially now I asked you to play more, yeah. 
So it means you have to be, you know, deep in the string with a lot of weight, but then, of course, you can play with the same intensity on the A string. Sometimes your sound on the upper register is a little bit suffering, you know? Try to always, always with a lot of air, always this kind of speed, you know, in the sound. Try to create the sound with more air and maybe less pressure and try to really keep working hard here, you know, so that you, you always have the sound in control, so to say, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it, it's a bit too hard, you know? Yeah. And then when you go to the, to the lower strings, of course, you have to adjust, you put more weight, and then immediately on the A string and, and D string less. So here, there is extremely, I mean, there is so much happening, you know, yeah. because yeah. on almost every tone, it's a different way of producing the sound, right? Yeah. So this, you should be even more, um, you should be even more consequent, you know, with mm -hmm. it. Um, can you just write the same spot one last time? Yeah. Just one thing I'm, I'm uh, uh, observing now. Um, I, I think you play a lot in that part yeah. of the book. I don't know if it's really uh, wanted, <laughs> but I have the feeling the more you play up here, uh, the more you have to work somehow. Maybe, Probably, yeah. yeah, maybe you will feel a bit more grounded if you stay more in that part of the bow. So. <laughs> Try maybe to stay around here so that you have a better control here and then I think you will have much more sound in the lower register if you are here than if you are here, you know. And then if you play at the, at the point, then, then you have to make yeah. bigger, to make bigger gestures. You know? So um, why don't you try to stay more in that part of the bow? Yeah, great. So I think I think it will be more efficient. And then, um, as I said, always keep always try to keep the line. The line, you know. So even if you practice it slower, try to have one tempo and try to take out those habits of of um, you know interrupting yeah, so, yeah. the flow. You know, I think it's. Um, I think it's it's a pity, you know, for the for the whole shape of the of yeah. the movement. Um, good. So those elements, of course, you know, you have to to get used to it and so. Yeah, but yeah. those were a few things I wanted to talk about. And um, could we try from um, from here now? Because it's the first time. It's the first time that it's going up <laughs> again like this so can you try from bar uh, 39 yeah Okay, good. Um, just a few things. Here again, the sound quality, especially the open A string, one has to be always very careful about it, you know, so that it doesn't stick out. So try sometimes always very light so that I don't hear it. Uh, yeah? Can you try from here? And here again, 
maybe try to keep. I want to hear a chord, you know, it's. Uh... Yeah? So, of course, we can't have the chord in one because, you know, it's technically not possible, but I think it's. It's very important to keep the tension, especially the. This interval is extremely strong, you know? So, don't just take a break and then go on because you lose. The tension also, right? So try one more time from here. Ah, you hear the the A string? Good, great. I think this could be a bit more um, improvised, you know. Um, I know in the score it's written, you know, da -da 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 -da, like, like this, but um, never forget that Bach was an incredible improviser, you know, when yeah. he was sitting at the Oracle. So I think this has something more, you know, cadenza uh, basic, uh, you know. So. Um, of course. You know, uh, Bach is, is a huge universe, no? So uh, there are so many ways of playing it, of course. But for me now, it was a little bit just... Just a bit too brave, you know? I think you have to take us somewhere, uh, in some way, no? So maybe it has to do with timing um, or with... I mean, it's, it's not necessarily a rubato, but I think it's... Uh, something extremely, you know, totally different than, than this structure. I think that's, that's why this prelude is so amazing, is that you have those blocks, you know, those big cathedral blocks, and then all of a sudden you have this coming from nowhere. And I think it's quite nice to play it not too rhythmically, so that it, it's a very big contrast to the, the big uh, columns that, that we had before, yeah. you know. So try maybe a bit more free. Good. Um, in general, in Bach or, or you know, in general for, for Baroque music, I try to um, use more simple fingerings, you know, uh, staying in the first position. Um, especially in this one, you know, where you have to work so much, I think it's quite nice to... It's yeah. beautiful. It has something so natural, you know, to stay here. So maybe I wouldn't do too much of this, yeah. and especially it actually uh, would also help you to relax your hand for a bit because it's um, before it starts again. No, so I think both musical, musically and also technically, it might be a plus actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why don't you try very simple, just on, in the first position? Exactly. So that, so that you know, the, the line is just showed by, by the instrument. You know, you go up, it sounds a bit more, and then you go down. It's, it's the most natural thing. And then here again, watch out with the open A string. What I do before an open A string, I usually sustain a little bit more. It's on the D string usually before. So this, I play more and then very light. Yeah, sorry. Yeah? Try one more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to get used to the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah? But 
Don't hesitate to, um, to to play a bit faster also, you know, it's, I think it, it's, um, it, it was very much in the style also back then, you know, to, to play with a lot of fantasy, you know, not, not too strict because yeah. everything you have played before is already extremely, you know, vertical. This should be a big contrast, yeah? Yeah. Okay, um, and then let's go to the next one, so from here. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, I think in general you should try to think more like waves, you know. It's, uh, it's incredible because we have the columns before and now we have a sort of, of tsunami you know, coming yeah. in the church. It's, uh, it's aesthetically extremely strong, you know, what's happening. So try to... Always go somewhere, don't play. I think it's... And then here again, maybe you could start a bit less so that we really have the, the wave feeling, you know. And then here also in terms of sound, try to find the sound, you know, deep in the thing. Maybe release. So that's I always feel the phrasing, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a bit. Yeah, I think it's a bit too flat in a way, you know. So can you try this chord once? Yeah. Exactly, and then try to... Of course, this is a bit tricky, but... That's the same thing, so you put probably more weight, I mean, not probably, for sure, more weight down, and then as soon as you go up, try to relax a bit so that the sound is, is very pure, you know, so... Yeah? Try again from here. It's interesting to see that um, in the manuscript, actually, um, mm -hmm. I mean, as I said before, we don't have the manuscript from, uh, from Bach, right? But we have it from his wife. And um, here it says all, um, let me just check again, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's not sure that it was slurred, right? So. I would, I would, you know, again have more waves so that. So that we really feel this all the time. You know, if it's too linear, I think it's um, it's hard to to feel the intensity. You know, mm -hmm. and and so can you try one from here? Have you tried once to say... Have you tried like this? <laughs> it's, it's tricky. I, don't, I can't see how big your hand is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically you could try to... to really play this song and then release right away, you know. But, okay, that's another story. And yeah, try one more time. From the D? The yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think here also it's very important to sustain the to have the intensity for two bars, you know, it's really This is very intense. It's not quite uh, released yet. Yeah. And then finally here. And then either you go on with a very uh, dark uh, spirit or you release sort of more resigned, you know. But, but the whole cadenza episode before should be intense for two bars, you know, otherwise I really lose the tension. Yeah, so try to... to go until here. Yeah, and then really I think it's, uh, it's a much stronger message, you know, that you are delivering instead of, of um, relaxing after every chord, you know? Yeah. Try to really sustain. Yeah. And, and I think the, the tempo might help you also. Um, I really noticed that you have the, the tendency to slightly wait, you know, after a chord or after a, 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 a string change, yeah. a string crossing or so. So um, the more you wait and you interrupt the phrase, the more you lose the intensity, of course. So why don't you try to keep going? Huh? Okay, and then always try to think a little crescendo, you know, so that it's not, it should go to the next chord, right? So try to play a bit less and then to really fall to the next chord, yeah? When you play it in tempo, we won't be able to hear it. But I don't want to hear wrong accents at the wrong place, no? I need to hear the strong, the weight on the chord and not on the ta ta da 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 Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, try one more time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, still a little bit, um, it's still a little bit slow, yeah? So I think uh, that, that's something that's, that's interesting that you could work on, you know, to try to, um, to have um, the tempo on your side to, to build the intensity and, and, and your dynamics and, and everything. No? So I think the slower you play and the more you slow down, the, the yeah. more difficult it would be, you know, for us to know exactly where you want to go. So that's something very important, I, I think. Yeah. Um, Let's do maybe, um, well, actually, I guess we should go to the next movement now if we want to cover everything. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, it was the Sarabande, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Great. Bravo. Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. Great. Bravo. Sorry, I was inter interrupting you after the, the second repeat because we don't have so much time, but <laughs> very sorry about that, but great. Um, for me personally, um, of course, it's, um, it's always difficult with the Sarah Bond because we have those old recordings, you know, of, of very contemplative ways of, of playing it, you know, and, and, and uh, when I was um, a kid, you know, I, I used also to, to really enjoy this meditative part of the Staraban, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then the more um, I grew up, the more I was trying to come back to the original spirit of it, which is still a dance, you know, of course, it's the slowest from the whole suite, but it's still a dance. And um, it's, it's difficult for me now because I love the meditative, meditative way you're, uh, you know, presenting it. But at the same time, I'm missing a little bit of the dance, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So um, what I did personally, and of course, everybody is, is free, thank God, to, to, you know, shape it the way he wants. Um, I was trying to combine both, you know, so that um, I still have this, uh, this spirit of dancing. And, and most of the time, it, it might be uh, related to tempo, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if if you if you might be interested to try it just a little bit more flowing, mm -hmm. so that we could try to get back to the spirit where I still want to be able to see clearly, you know, where the dance is going, um, which steps we have also yeah. in the harmony, um, so that it's not too static in a way. You know, I think it was a little bit static. Um, yeah, so yeah. Um, I don't know, uh, that's really something to talk about, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. there is no truth or, or you know, but um, I think it would be just interesting also for the listeners now to see uh, other ways of, of playing it, you know, it's the same music, but it can sound totally different. Why don't we try just a little bit more, a little bit more flooring? <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't so... So that's... Somehow, I mean, <laughs> that wasn't the version I would, I would take for a CD recording, but what I was trying to show is, you know, how we can show the shapes in an even more clear way mm. uh, with a tempo that's a little bit more yeah. going forward, you know. Just, just try once and, and see. Good. 
Yeah, so I mean, uh, now it, it might be even a bit too fast. I don't know. It's, it's really, it shouldn't be that much, you know, but I think one element that's really important is this. Uh, when you play it, it sounds a little bit flat, you know. I think it should always be this reason. Bam, ba bam, ba bam. Yeah, I really want to hear heavy, light, heavy, you know, this kind of, of uh, um, uh, elements that are extremely important in Baroque music, you know, the weight, light, weight, you know. Yeah. So I wouldn't play, I wouldn't play everything the same. Yeah, uh, can you try? Yeah, actually, I, I understand. Um, the, the way you play is a bit too lazy. <laughs> it's a bit too loose, you know? And <laughs> I could see, when I hear that, I could see like a, a couple dancing that, you know, I don't know, has a broken leg or is still like, you know, in pain of moving. <laughs> I think the yam, ba bam, ba bam should be extremely active somehow, you know, even if the general feeling is very relaxed. Mm. I would still, you know, and, and the articulation is also very important, you know, yam, ba bam. Yeah, can you try one more time? Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's, for me, it's going in the right direction. One thing also you should really avoid is to have fingerings on this, uh, to change position on this. This I would avoid also before you play it. No? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so I would really stay in the same position and then here also stay in the same position and move to the other position during the break. Yeah, so that we are not disturbed by, by this, yeah? yeah. Um, so you've seen, right? In, it's in the second bar. I would advise you to play one, three. And here also, yeah? Can you try now from, the, um, from here? Okay, good. So it's interesting because now again, um, Bach is building a, a longer phrase, you know, over I think at least three bars, right? So let us hear that. It's interesting because he always connects the third beat to the next uh, first beat, right? So make sure that the upper voice that the sound is very pure and that's, that the sound is standing, uh, staying in that yeah. slur, you know, because I hear your sound disappear a bit or it gets a bit out of tune. So really try to... Same thing here. Try to keep the upper note. And most of all here, because the harmony and the interval is very strong. And finally, you can release, no? So here again, it's very important for you to know exactly in which part of, uh, I mean, where you are going to play, right? So mm -hmm. I would suggest you now, just as an exercise, to try, um, you start up here, and then you go further down every time, a little bit more so that the sound is more intense in here. Try to really... 
of course it's minimal i don't know for the listeners or for the viewers if they can see it but it's mostly you know about this so that you don't play all the time here yeah. but you know it's we're talking about you know two centimeters yeah so it's not very spectacular but in terms of sound and of intensity it makes a big difference yeah, yeah. so can you try just for me from here I think it's too loud. You could start softer. Yeah. Now more. Exactly. Yeah, I think the phrase was much more clear now, yeah? So, um, of course, here again, the bowings are not quite clear, but um, I think it makes sense if you play, if you slur this one, I think you should also slur this one, so that we have those three steps, you know? Yeah? Um, good. And then... Here you could consider it staying on the on the A string because it's so natural. You know this. Of course, it's it's possible as well now, but um, mm -hmm. I think there is so, something so natural about using first position. You know, in in bar, and then you have the beautiful open string. You know, it's it's. It can be more pure than this, you know. This is a bit more... For me, I don't know. I don't find it as convincing, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I think those are different things you can try to, um, to experiment and um, just keep working on, on those different levels of, of yeah. playing, you know, so that, so that I can hear your musical ideas even more. And uh, yam, pa pam, pa pa. This rhythm is extremely important. Yeah, I wouldn't play it too too loose, right? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, with a tempo that that always, of course, I love the meditative part of it, but never forget that it should be dancing still, yeah. in a very slow way, <laughs> but still dancing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, did you want to do a little bit of crumb? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> okay, great. So um, Ernest is going to play the first movement of the sonata for solo cello from George Crumb, an American composer from the 20th century.
Great, bravo. <laughs> Very nice. I, I've been playing this piece a lot <laughs> for many years and it's, it's great to, to hear it again. Um, okay, um, we have, I think, about 10 minutes, so um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to make the best out of it. Um, just in general, in terms of uh, structure, the, the structure of the movement is probably one of the most easy you can have for a movement. Mm -hmm. It starts from here, it goes like this, it no. grows, it grows in the middle, and then it goes back like this, right? So um, I think the challenge for you now is to make us feel that even more, you know? Yeah. And he writes it very clearly, and this is one thing I want um, to work on with you now. Um, so we have the pits elements. Every time that was, that was very good. When the melody comes for the first time, Yeah, it says mezzo piano, so yeah. it starts it starts here. Then the second time, poco forte. Yeah, poco forte. And then the third time, più forte. Yeah, and then from there, fortissimo appassionato, e sonora, and always more, always more, always more. And then um, until. And then again, mezzo piano, yeah, and then mezzo piano dolce, less, and then pianissimo, and then more rendo. I think this could be even more at the end. And then the two last chords. Yeah, so I hope it was clear enough for, for the listeners, but uh, Crum really writes precisely the steps yeah. up and then the steps down. And I think you will be able to create more tension and, and a more spectacular opening of the whole thing and closing of the thing if you really respect those things, right? So yeah. let's try now in terms of uh, technical uh, aspects what we can do to improve that. So can you play just the first one in, pianist, in mezzo piano? I think it was probably a bit too loud. Yeah, you really have to know exactly uh, what dynamic range you have at your disposal. No, so maybe it's it makes more sense to start quite soft. You know. Yeah, can you try one more time? Just just that phrase. Good, and now the next one, poco forte. Mm -hmm. Okay, he writes poco forte and then crescendo. I think you should really sustain. So that it's going all the way here. Yeah, don't, don't release yeah, yeah. too soon, because otherwise, we, we don't understand that the whole thing is one step more, you know? So can you try once more from... Mm -hmm. Here also... Stay loud and then diminuendo, yeah? Okay, and then the next one, più forte. Yeah, so you see, for this one, uh, I wouldn't start again here. I know it's written, it's printed like this, no? But, but for me, the way you started sounds too much alike uh, with the two previous times, no? I think now you are you are in the <laughs> you are in the action, right? So at the beginning we don't quite know what's happening. So also I, I like how you do with the vibrato that you wait a bit and so that's that's perfect. Then and, and now I like to start actually down here, you know, so that I really show. That, that it's più forte now, yeah? So maybe you should try. 
Can you try one more time? Right from there. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I would really suggest you actually there was better what you did to start like this and then the third. That's very good. Yeah. So now you have, you have those three steps. Um, one other thing now that I want to mention is the, the tempo. Um, it says andante espressivo. So andante, when you see andante, of course it's quite slow but but with a lot of, of direction, yeah? Adagio is maybe a bit more yeah. static, but Andante is always with. So um, here again, I have the feeling that too often you are interrupting yeah. the phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you play this. Sorry. Just keep going. Yeah. Don't wait, because otherwise we lose so much tension, yeah? And then. Yeah, and then you should really keep going so that we are in the middle of, of a big storm, you know, and, and <laughs> I've never seen a storm, you know, that suddenly gets quiet and then again and then like this, yeah. It should be as soon as it starts to be, you know, precipitando and appassionato sonore, you should be in the middle of all this and keep going all the time and that's what I wanted to tell you for the whole middle part. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are a lot of technical challenges, yeah? And yeah. I wouldn't be quite able to show it right now, but, but um, just keep going so that we don't, we don't lose the energy, yeah? So every time you have this rhythm... Yeah, just try to keep going. Don't stop... To, to, you know, to find the notes. Of course, you do it when you practice yeah. slowly at home. But now that you know, you know more or less uh, what's happening, try to, to keep the, the energy and, and the rhythm going on. Yeah? So um, here also, I wouldn't wait yeah. too long. Yeah. So then, yeah, and then, and then all those elements also after. It's extremely important also that we understand the rhythm, for instance, when you play it. Um, try to keep the rhythm because um, you take a little bit too much freedom, yeah, in terms of freedom, and then we lose the intensity again, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think this is quite important for you for the next step. Um, of course, here is happening a lot, <laughs> but try to try to still keep it to to really just make sure to play exactly the rhythm that's written, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that the music just flows the way it's written, yeah. Um, can you try um, from um, from here? Yeah, so you see here, for instance, I have the feeling that, that your sound is a bit dying at the end, you know? Try to... Just keep going. So maybe, maybe you should, you know, have more speed here. And and this figure is very fast, you know. So don't don't wait too long. Yeah? Can you try? Yeah. <laughs> you are you are always stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you are a bit stuck on this. Yam papa. Yeah, don't wait. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, good. Um, I think it's interesting because in the in the bath in the pre it was the same. 
at some point you end up playing everything up here, <laughs> you know, and uh, to get a proper deep sound, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard up yeah. there, yeah? So maybe you should help yourself and try to stay here. Mm -hmm. So I think this leads to the second um, sort of weakness maybe that you have a little bit in your playing is that you should be able, when you start from here, to go deeper in the string, yeah. maybe a bit closer to the bridge so that you are saving bow, you know? Mm -hmm. I have the feeling that since you don't really do it, of course, yeah. um, for the listeners uh, that maybe don't know it, but the more we play close to the bridge, so down here, the more we, the more the, the, the bow is being spared, you know, so that if you, if you stay up here, it's very light and very easy to go to the, to the tip. Yeah. So try to stay a bit more here. Uh, Yeah, so that you, you have a really better control, you know? Okay, yeah, good. And then, always when you play, I think this should be lighter, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, it's actually also very similar to what we did before, when you have the chord, a lot of weights, because you have to play two strings, right? But then from here, try to play lighter so that it's not too forced. And anyways, it's nice to have yam papa and then a sort of a beat yam da Yeah. So in your technical approach, you should really know when you go deep in the string with a lot of weight and then release a bit lighter and then again wait okay mm -hmm. so that the sound quality um, doesn't suffer you know yeah um, i don't know if you have any questions about about this aspect but um no, no, yeah i understand yeah yeah you understand mm -hmm. okay um good yeah so i think that would be that would be the few advices and then at the very end uh, i think one element that you could add for this this ending you know he really writes morendo so mm -hmm. um, after all the energy that you gave it has to sound exhausted first and then dying right so why don't you try also to use less and less vibrato mm -hmm. so that in the end you are so tired you know and then from here I would use maybe just one hair, you know, and then yeah. morendo, and this is this is like Don Quixote, you know, when yeah. he's dying in Strauss. Mm -hmm. eh? It's exactly the same idea. You should be dying, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah. So can you just try this, and then nothing, nothing. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's still a very uh, healthy yeah, yeah. death, you know? <laughs> I think you should be totally exhausted, you know? So that's why I was suggesting you don't vibrate at all and then it should be almost uh, unhearable, you know? I don't want to be able to hear it. It has to disappear completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you try to go even more on the fingerboard? Look, like, so that the sound yeah. is out of out of breath. Exactly. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, you have to adjust to the hole where you yeah. play it. But I think even in a very big hole, it's. A, quite spectacular to really, so that people have to really listen like this, yeah? Don't make it too comfortable for the, yeah. for the listeners. It should, you know, morendo is morendo, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, I think that's it for today. All right. <laughs> yeah.
I really hope to get to meet you once, you know, for real. Yeah. Um, hopefully in, in 2001 and 20. Yeah. When we are hopefully allowed to come back. Um, <laughs> it was it was a great pleasure to meet you today. It was and, nice to uh, you listen to me as well. <laughs> great. I wish you all the best. Huh? You too. Lots of energy and uh, motivation in those difficult times, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Take See care. Bye-bye.